I begin this episode of Cut the Clutter on a short note of apology. That's because I missed National Interest, the column, as well as the video version of it last weekend. That's mainly because we had a health challenge in the family. One of our children needed a small surgery. That's been done successfully. That's out of the way. So I'm back at your service again. And while we've been dealing with so many other things, all of us in our own ways, uh, we are also recovering from COVID. Uh, again, thank God, nicely done. Uh, thanks to the vaccines. Leaders of the world have been worrying about how the global balance of power has shifted and how rudely it has shifted and how it has created new challenges for any country which has a stake, which has a stake in global stability. Now, four of those countries, India, <clears throat> we are not using alphabetical or any other order. India is the most important, important for us. So that comes first. India, Japan, the next closest geographically, Australia and America. All four form what is called the Quad. And the Quad foreign ministers had their own version of this summit meeting in Melbourne last week. Now, this is something that you've seen a lot of pictures about. You've seen a lot of reports about. While that's, that's been happening, other crises have been unfolding at the same time. And the mega crisis in the world, which has got everybody's attentions fixated, is Ukraine. Ukraine, Russia, will Russia invade? Will Russia not invade? Uh, is America going to help Ukraine, America and NATO? Is Biden's America actually exaggerating the threat from Russia? Is it because he he's still smarting under the humiliation or his humiliating withdrawal of Afghanistan or the way it, it turned out in the end, it was very badly mismanaged and completely messed up. And that's why he's sort of overcorrecting in Ukraine. Or is it or is it because as <clears throat> or is it because as Tulsi Gabbard has alleged, he's under pressure from, from the military industrial complex, which thinks a new full-on Cold War will start, should start with Russia and China on one side, America and its allies on the other. It will be very good for them. And as you may have seen, we did a story also last week, how defense contractors and defense companies, suppliers, stock prices have been going up in a market where stock prices are going down generally. So it was in that environment that these four quad powers met in Melbourne. Now, there is a bunch of issues arising from this, and I will also give you a fair share of opinion, maybe to make up for the fact that I did not, did not uh, write my national interest this week. That is, four, four countries of these dimensions, these are four large countries. Each one has multilateral, multinational, pan-national, uh, and multi-oceanic interests. These are in the Indo-Pacific, but all their interests are not confined to Indo-Pacific. Now, if you look at Japan, for example, and each country has different issues. For Japan, Japan and India have one thing in common of these four, vis-a-vis -vis their security concerns, they have one thing in common, which is that they have active territorial disputes with China. China claims a lot of territory uh, in India and also sits for a lot of territory, Xi Jinping, which India considers its own, which is, which is a part of our map. Similarly, Japan has its issue with Senkaku Islands and East China Sea in general, where China has been unilaterally uh, sort of announcing its own air defense uh, identification zones, ADIZ. So all those, all those territorial disputes exist uh, bet, bet, for India and Japan with China. Australia is too far to have a territorial dispute, or a dispute although sometimes ter ter territorial disputes can come up very far from a country's shores also. Remember, United Kim Kingdom, Great Britain and Falklands slash Malvinas, which are so close to Argentina and so far away from Britain. But those are rare occasions. So Australia does not have, mercifully for it, any territorial dispute with China. Australia's dispute with China is essentially a trade dispute. And right now, they see that they are being coerced by the Chinese power in the area of trade. They've also noticed that the Chinese in many areas are infiltrating their system. There have been reports also on, on the Chinese now funding 
some of the forces on the left or maybe center left or maybe more on the left uh, because elections are coming up in Australia hoping that like that uh, Scott Morrison's conservative government will be defeated and the new government once again will be soft on China as center left governments and have been in the past. So China expects that that era of appeasement will probably be back uh, once there is a, gov a government change in Australia. Australia has also acted in many other areas in Chinese funding of scholarship, Chinese funding of universities. So they have that fear from Australia but essential threat is that on trade. India on the other hand has Chinese forces actually pushing, up, pushing around our forces on our very active borders. We have seen a build up unprecedented in our history. This kind of a build up did not even take place in 62 simply because none of the countries had either the forces or the wherewithal to get them there for this kind of a build up. But this is a build up that has gone on for 22 months now and we do not know how long it will last. In fact, as we speak, India has once again delivered what might just be a little flea bite by banning another bunch of Chinese apps. Maybe, uh, maybe there are so many Chinese apps that every six months we can ban another 50, 60 just to assuage public opinion. But otherwise, you do not see much improvement with China. America on the other hand, America's interests are more complex. America does not have territorial issues. It does not have trade issues, but America has security treaties with many countries in the region and many countries that China is pushing around with. So one of them is Australia, the other is Japan. So that is the other variation in the quad. The three countries of the quad have mutual security treaties amongst themselves. To that extent, India is the odd country out because India does not have such a tie-up or such a deal with the Americans. Australians, in fact, even are part of the Five Eyes Alliance. So they get intelligence. It's gone right back to the early days of the Cold War and Second World War. India has not been made a part of it. Similarly, Australia by itself is also a member of AUKUS. That is the America-US-Australia arrangement whereby Australia will get uh, US technology through Britain for building nuclear submarines, nuclear powered submarines. India has not been given that privilege as yet because India does not have access to western nuclear submarine technology. Simply because India is not a security ally, India does not have that status. That is the reason I say India is the odd man out. But India is the country which at this point faces the most immediate danger from the Chinese. And India, again, look at the comp complexities of Quad. India also has a great deal of dependence on Russia. Americans today, the topmost American security concern is Ukraine uh, or topmost American jagra or fight right now or tension right now with another global power is not with China. The immediate problem is with Russia over Ukraine. Now that is where it is impossible for India to make common cause. In fact, India more or less abstains. They abstain, we, we abstain from voting at the UN. But also when these talks come up, you can see that uh, Indian foreign minister, Indian diplomats, Indian prime minister also, they will all walk on eggshells and they will also all have their rehearsed lines that they want a peaceful uh, resolution of the Ukraine problem through diplomatic means and nothing else. China on the other hand is much closer to Russia now. And that has enabled Russia because Russia also wants leverage vis-a-vis -vis the US because it has some, something to achieve in Ukraine. Maybe it does not want to subjugate Ukraine or absorb it again in the new Russian empire, but it also has an idea of what is their own sphere of influence. And they want their dadagiri in their region. So they have got the Chinese as their allies and because Partly because India is a part of member of the Quad, Russians have also bent over backwards to accommodate China's topmost ally, that is Pakistan, into what we described as the anti-Quad. And that is why Imran Khan is going to uh, Moscow now, the first Pakistani leader, uh, chief executive in more than 20 years. And it is quite likely this year that maybe even Putin will visit Pakistan and become the first. Russian leader, chief executive 
to visit Pakistan at any time. Now, that has a lot of other implications, including support from Russia over Kashmir at the UN. So, India has to calculate all this. Japan has to make its own calculations because Japan has, Russians also knew what they were going to do in Ukraine and they also responded ahead because they may not be a superpower anymore, but they still have the temperament of a big power, great power or superpower. So what they did some time back, and we had actually recorded a full episode of Cut the Clutter on that, they started increasing some trouble and some tension around Kuril Islands. Kuril Islands are sort of an extension of the larger Sakhalin area uh, and the Russians have claims there, they are occupying some that the Japanese think belong to them and they started increasing their activity there, uh, more naval vessels, etc. So that was a message to Japan that remember, uh, while you might uh, be signing up with others against China, you have problems with us also. So you don't want Pangas on both sides uh, of your, you are an island state, you don't want Pangas on both sides. You don't want, don't want trouble on both sides. So Japan also, whatever, whatever it might think of Ukraine now has to calculate, now has to keep this calculation in mind. What is it that the Russians could do? Because in many ways, Russian behavior uh, under Putin now has also been less predictable, just like Xi Jinping's behavior. Because anytime you think that maybe, maybe this this leader, she or Putin will not go beyond this. They do go beyond this. So they are not conforming to any patterns that you might be familiar with in the past. In this process, look at America. America is right now stuck. America is right now stuck simply because they can't choose what is their big threat. Is it China? Is it Russia? Should they focus on China and ignore Russia for now, which means letting the Rus uh, Russians have their way in Ukraine? or because Ukraine is a European country, they say they tell Russia that look, just like the Baltics, we will also make sure that Ukraine is unmolested. So we will first deal with you first. So do they deal with the Russians in the sense that Russia is a big power, they'll be loath to do it, or, also, or, or in the sense that Russia is an ally of China. So let's deal with Russia first and we will deal with China later. That will be getting caught in a situation that's very much like China has caught India in, which means China uses a much smaller power, which is Pakistan, to balance India, to triangulate India between themselves and Pakistan. So they tell India, look, you deal with Pakistan first. When you are when you are so strong that you can deal with China, Pakistan sort of then then we might treat you as equals. It's a bit like an example I like to use, which is that in the old days of this freestyle show wrestling, Dara Singh used to be some kind of a uh, world champion. Anytime he got a challenge, he'd say, first fight with my brother, Randhava. So if you can defeat him, then you can defeat me. So Pele ek semi-final. So do the Americans now fight Russia like that? That is a big dilemma for the Americans and American system itself internally is divided. We've seen strong attacks, surprise, surprise, but no surprise from the American right on Biden, which is saying that he's unnecessarily picking up a fight with the Russians when the real threat to him, come, this is in, ca in, in case you haven't met her, this is our Cleo. She's also come back from hospital today. Uh, she, she was injured and going through treatment. So we had, we had, a child undergoing surgery and the second child, a canine one, also admitted to hospital. But it's a good day because she's also back. Nevertheless, coming back to the point. So, American right is now saying, I'm paraphrasing it and I'm oversimplifying it, that look, why are you fighting with Russia? What is Russia? Russia is a white, mostly European, Christian country. Why are you fighting with Russia? Fight the communist Chinese, right? That is also what the German Navy chief said in Delhi, uh, that, that was a speech that cost him his job. And he said that, look, not that many Russians may go to uh, the church, but they are a Christian state. They want a little bit of freedom of action in their own neighborhood in Europe, which is essentially former republics or former members of uh, what used to be their alliance, right? So give them that space. Kya jata hai? And meanwhile, we, get, we keep our strength 
we, we get it all together and we build other alliances to take care of China and maybe in the course of time, Russia also joins that alliance. So that is the dilemma that Biden is dealing with. Now, if you see all the, all the stuff coming out of Quad, they do a lot of faltu talk. A lot of it is just filling up paper, like planning commission of old days, right? It's all paper, 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 all verbiage. You don't know what's going on there. So they'll talk about vaccines, they'll talk about equity, equity here, equity there. They don't talk military. They are afraid of talking military and they don't talk China. In fact, if you look at it from India's point of view, the joint statement, there are passages in the joint statement that are obviously referring to China and Pakistan. So the statement refers to rule of law, the principles being followed in South China Sea and East China Sea. That is, that is reference to China. Also agreements, settled agreements being respected. That's a reference to China. Our foreign minister Jay Shankar in fact said that everybody is worried about China because China is now going back on settled written agreements and commitments. So there, are, there is that reference to China. Similarly, you can see a reference to Pakistan because there is a, there is, there is a sizable reference to terrorism which mentions which mentions even Pathan Court attack, Bombay attacks, Pathan Court attacks. So again, Pakistan is not named. So there is a certain shyness, not a certain shyness, there is a total shyness to naming anybody. So once again, this is an alliance which is in very early stages. It's moving very slowly. It's moving enough to get the Chinese all riled up. And that is why we found, found the Zhao Liji and the Chinese uh, foreign ministry spokesman who is a celebrity across the world. Uh, he said that this was basically an alliance to contain China or to encircle China. The fact is on the other hand that Australia finds itself completely in terms of trade blackballed, blackballed by China with its economy suffering. It's an exporting economy and also it finds a lot of internal stuff being done by the Chinese. Uh, within their country with, with security implications. The Japanese find the Chinese pushing from one side, the Russians pushing from the other. Indonesia, Vietnam, they are all, the Philippines, they are all buying new weaponry. The Philippines is buying Brahmos from India. Indonesia has just ordered 42 Rafale from France and is also order, ordering a version of the new F-15s from America. Now, what is Indonesia buying all of that for? Now, you might say tomorrow that, look, if the Chinese really decide to invade Indonesia or the Philippines, what will these few Brahmos or these few Rafals and F-15s do? And you could use the parallel to say that, look, all the weapons you give to Ukraine, you might think, and there is talk about Ukraine turning itself into a porcupine, so when the Russians come in, uh, they will be biting uh, the Russians from all directions. But the fact is that if Putin really wants to invade Ukraine and streamroll his way through accepting what casualties and what da what damage or what losses come uh, come in the way, then it will be it will be quite unlikely that Ukraine can stop them, block them for too long because overall disparity in military power is so much, and that is what. Even Indonesia, the Philippines, Vietnam, they will also see. And that's why the only answer to that disparity of power is alliances. And they are all looking at Quad. And they would all be hoping and praying that Quad, Quad takes a slightly more military look. It is not going to happen overnight, but maybe moves in that direction. Because today, the only country with the military sort of standing in with the horns locked with the Chinese is India's military. So strengthening India's military is in everybody's interest. At the same time, India's military has still deep dependencies on Russia. So these are contradictions that Quad has to address. But the biggest of these contradictions comes from, I will tell you in conclusion. Before that, I will just, just refer to you, uh, refer you to one very, very good, very wise, and very well argued paper written at, Lo at, at Australia's Lowy Institute by Lavina Lee. So I'll share a link with you. Please read that paper in full. And I think uh, I, like, I like even her opening line. Opening line, she says that, look, these are four countries which have 
which have diverse views by way of threat perception. I told you uh, Japan and India have territorial threat perception, Australia has trade, right? America has global power balance, threat perception also Taiwan and, and America also is committed to the, to the security of Japan and Australia. One, they have differing threat perceptions. Two, they have differing risk tolerance because every country does not want to take that level of panga. Once again, use India's example. They are, they are coming and pushing us around. So we have no choice but to fight back. But all others uh, may not have the same appetite. And also India may, may also want the risk not to increase but to be contained now at this level. And all four countries have different military capabilities. Right? America has a humongous military capability, strongest in the world, although they are very far away. Right? India has a big territorial border, a strong military power, but a big territorial border to defend. A navy which is getting stronger, but is still not so large as to balance the Chinese. And, and India then faces that dilemma. Should you transfer more of your defense resources to the navy, in which case you take your eye off your land borders, right? And whenever you take your eye off the land border, the Chinese get the Pakistanis activated. So you have to worry about the land borders as well. So India is a resource-trapped country with a military will, large military, but resource-trapped. India has India is most resource-trapped out of the four, four, four countries. And all four countries, she says, have different strategic cultures. America has one strategic culture of intervention everywhere. Japan has another strategic culture of complete pacifism, etc. after the Second World War, right? only spending a limited amount on their defense. Australia has an allies, a small allies strategic, strategic culture. And India, if you ask me, has particularly vis with China, has purely a defensive strategic culture, a defensive, a territorial defense strategic culture. Culture. So, you have to balance all these contradictions. Now, that is the reason Quad has also moved very slowly. Quad, the idea came up in two, 2007 and then that idea died or went into deep sleep, hibernation for a full decade. Except in 2008, for some time, if you can call it Quad-like cooperation, the navies of India, US, Japan, Australia together worked on tsunami relief. Right? Otherwise, nothing happened because UPA lost its energy uh, and lost its nerve. Uh, also, I think it expended too much political capital at that point on the Indo-US nuclear deal. And Manmohan Singh's government, given how much old latent leftism remained in the Congress party, did not have the intellectual or political capital to move ahead. So India was the most reluctant all that while. 2017, 10 years later, it was revived. Now, again, if I look at Lavina Lee's paper, she gives you she gives you five specific points uh, on how these countries look at their situation. So, first of all, five points of agreement. First of all, they all want a stable balance of power in Indo-Pacific. They don't want the rise of China to upset everything. Uh, so, they want stability, a kind of status quo to be restored where it was before the Chinese began to push in at Taiwan, at Japan, at India, on the land borders and elsewhere. Number two, they want, they want to deter the use of force or coercion. That you see on the Indian borders, that you see vis-a-vis -vis Taiwan, that you see vis-a-vis -vis Japan. Number three, they want maritime, or maritime order to be rule-based for the free shipment, free movement of goods. Because all four are big trading states and they have economies which are greatly dependent on their trade and commerce. That's an easy one. Fourth, they all want rules-based economic order. And that's where the, where the BRI, the Chinese loans, the Chinese use of, uh, use of preferential imports or exports or Chinese use of rare metals, etc. All of that comes in there and all four have a common interest in keeping a rule-based econo economic order because if you keep a rules-based economic order, then China would not have been able to push the Australians the way they have done now. And fifth, which is the least stated, and maybe it is the least important, but principally it is very important that all four, all four, four of these nations have stakes in 
in the prospering of liberal democratic states in the region instead of the rise of instead of the rise of more more and more dictatorships that is where you find the anti quad if you see the anti quad you have russia and china china is a puka dictatorship russia is an elected but a dictatorship ask mr navalny who is sitting in jail for a long time uh, and pakistan i mean uh, ask the pakistan is what they are i don't know uh, if you find five pakistanis you might get five answers but they also have a facade of democracy they are run by the army but again every policy in pakistan is determined by only one factor which is is it is it adversarial to india or not is it negative for india or not is it anti anti india or not so that's a country driven pretty much by that old blood feud mindset so it, it's in this situation the quad countries have that responsibility or that concern as well now i told you i'll tell you in the end what is the biggest problem with quad the biggest problem with quad is biden as the leader because nobody wants to say it all countries are equal but if quad has to grow the team if quad is a team that has to get ahead in life then the captain has to perform well and the captain has to look willing now the problem with joe biden is that so far we haven't seen him look willing at anything he's losing political capital at home he's getting unpopular he handled afghanistan so badly that the world has lost confidence in him nobody believes that he's going to send forces to defend ukraine so how will he defend ukraine by throwing more sanctions at the russians so the weakness of quad and lack of lack of conviction in quad and that's why i said i will tell you some opinion as well that comes essentially that comes essentially from the lack of conviction decisiveness decisiveness and frankly lack of leadership qualities from joe biden who should be the captain the unstated captain of the team unstated yes but even an unstated captain unannounced captain cannot be a non playing captain oh.